Apple just released iPadOS 15.5 Beta 3 to all developers to test out and make sure that it's running smoothly, but there's one specific, I guess, feature you would call it, I don't know what else to call it if it even is a feature, that I think is worth sharing, worth talking about, and I'm curious to know why Apple did this, but let's talk about it. Let's get it. So let's hop right into the video and find out what's new with iPadOS 15.5 Beta 3. But before we do get started, shout out to the person who told me to clean off my iPad screen a little bit, because again, I do use a screen protector by Paperlike, but it can get a little bit dirty, especially with somebody who doesn't clean their screen at all when there's a screen protector on. So shout out to the person who made me clean it, and now we're all clean. But to hop into the video, let's go into the photos. I took a screenshot of how big this update was gonna be. So you're gonna be dealing with almost half a gig. So give yourself at least one gigabyte of empty storage in order to get this downloaded correctly, get it installed correctly, and avoid any issues. If you're in a storage situation where you're all the way at the end, you know, get rid of some videos, get rid of some applications if you really wanna update this beta. Even though there aren't too many features with this one, it could be worth an update. And now let's learn about the build number a little bit. So let's go into the about section, see exactly what software version we're on. So we're on 15.519F062G. Now this is a little bit interesting because normally when Apple does release the betas, they go down in moniker. I believe last time we got an F or an E. I believe beta one was an F, beta two was an E, but now we're going back to G. So I don't know what Apple's doing with the ending of the monikers because normally as you go down, we go lesser and lesser and closer to A and then they finally get rid of the A and we get the RC edition. But again, it's 19F062G. And there was also a modem update. So if you have data enabled iPad of any kind and you update to the beta three software, you're gonna get a nice little modem update to help you with a little bit of internet connectivity. So now let's talk about some of the features that were introduced with this beta three update. But again, there weren't too many. When it comes to a beta update, the number of tangible features you're gonna see are gonna get smaller and smaller, especially with a beta three and a 15.5 update. But one thing that I did wanna to bring to everybody's attention was this new thing that was found by nine to five Mac. So iOS 15.5 beta blocks sensitive locations for memories in Photos app. If you guys aren't aware of memories, it's Apple's way of using AI inside of the photo library to kind of give you little slideshows with some experiences that you've gone through. So if you go to, let's say, a certain location on vacation and Apple sees that you're taking photos, let's say in the Bahamas or something, Basically, by the time you get out of the Bahamas, Apple's gonna say, hey, you have a new memory from the Bahamas, and it'll kind of put a nice slideshow together of all the different memories and photos that you took while in the Bahamas. And I actually really, really like this feature. It's helped a lot, especially once we had our kid, to be able to have just automated memories to be able to send out to people and things like that. But what Apple introduced with this new update is blocking of certain sensitive locations. And these are the locations that are blocked. So basically, what Apple is doing is that they're predetermining a set of locations that if you are in those locations and you take a photo, Apple will not include those photos in your memories slideshow that it creates via AI. Now again, most of these, according to 9to5Mac, are related to the Holocaust. And I don't know if somebody from the community reached out to Apple saying that maybe they don't want their guests to be tracked in these museums and these memorials and things like that. Maybe that's why Apple got rid of this sensitive information and the sensitive location data. So anytime you're in any of these locations and Apple could update these, remove some, add some, but anytime you're in these specific locations and you take pictures, those pictures will not be put into your memories. Your pictures will still be in your photo library. They just won't be included in any memories from let's say an entire weekend. So let's say on a weekend you went on vacation, but you decided to stop by a memorial here and you took some photos at that memorial, it won't be included in the memories of that holistic location or that holistic vacation. But that's just something to take note of. I'm just curious as to why Apple did this. I'm sure there's a 100% valid reason to do so, but just keep in mind that this is now a thing and Apple could add more and more locations to this list as we move forward. And now I wanna walk everybody through some of these release notes because these release notes are actually pretty interesting when you think about it. One of the biggest ones that I saw was this authentication feature. So a new feature which is support is added to the passkey technology preview, enabling signing into passkey compatible websites and apps on Mac and iPad using an iPhone with a saved passkey. So basically what this is allowing you to do is if you guys have seen those Yubico keys where it's a, a physical way to dual factor authentication into a certain you know, website or you know, your bank account information, things like that, it's a physical key that you plug into your USB-C port and that, is what's the, and that is your dual factor authenticator. So now what this is gonna allow to happen is people use their iPhone as their passkey authenticator. Very similar to getting a text message in the six digit code, but now having your iPhone be a physical key to unlocking any supported websites that do support that technology. So I thought that was a very interesting feature. So if you have your iPad and your iPhone together, those are like your two forms of authentication when logging into specific applications. 
And then the next one that I do want to talk about is this game controller one. There's a reason why I put this here. But according to this, support is now available for new DualSense adaptive trigger firmware features available, you know, that adaptive trigger. Basically what this means is that Apple's giving third-party developers the opportunity to enable DualSense technology, which is basically a rumble pack. So whenever you're using an Xbox controller or a PlayStation controller and you're playing a game like a shooting game, you usually feel vibrations when things happen that correspond to whatever action or behavior is going on on the screen. But currently when you use these controllers, which are supported natively by iPadOS and iOS, the rumble pack feature is not included. So games that are developed for the iPhone will not vibrate the controller, which is kind of a, a miss when it comes to games like Call of Duty. Call of Duty is a great iOS and iPadOS game, but it's missing some of those console-like features to get you over the hump and really tell people like, hey, your iPad could be your next game console, which in my opinion, it already is. Like I play a lot of 2K on here, a little Call of Duty Modern Warfare, but outside of that, I don't play too many video games, but it's gonna be really nice when they start including the Rumble Pack feature. Right now, it's only for the DualSense, which means on the Sony, on the PlayStation side. I'm hoping they also are inclusive with the Xbox controller, so if somebody only has one or the other, they can still use an Xbox controller and a PlayStation controller, whichever one they see fit. But outside of those few features that we did notice, there weren't anything new. Again, they're not really features, they're more back-end improvements. But what I do wanna talk about now is a little bit of battery life. So how has Apple done with battery life over time? So if we go down, let's hit the battery life down here go over the last 10 days and see what we're dealing with. So on a day like Monday, which we were still on the beta two software at that point, beta three has only been installed for a couple hours now, but on a day like Monday, we got about four hours of screen on time with 75% battery. We did get two hours of screen off time. So if you really wanna add that up, that's about six hours. And we did only about 75% battery, which means we probably could get to that eight hour mark on a day like Monday. And then you see a day over here like Wednesday where we have five hours of screen on time, almost six hours of screen on time but we charged it almost 150%. This thing was being used a lot that day in order to get some work done. So that is how you know that maybe the battery life just isn't quite there yet. I'm just waiting for the situation where Apple allows third-party applications to optimize for battery. Apple with their native applications has mastered battery optimization in my opinion, but it's when you go to apps like LumaFusion where 42% is two hours of work, right? So if I were to use 100% of battery, I could probably only edit for three to four hours. And then same with YouTube TV, YouTube, Affinity Photo, 20 minutes is 10%, which means that if I need to edit a few photos, I probably only get an hour and a half to two hours of battery life because Affinity Photo takes up so much power inside of these iPad Pros. But that is how we're doing from battery life. And then from a performance perspective, again, it's only been a few hours, but there's nothing really to complain about. Everything still works fine. You know, your control center is there or your notification center is there. Your control center still works. If you open up Safari, if you open up Safari, swipe down to open up another Safari, you can still do that. So everything works as advertised and it's working how it's supposed to work. And if I go to Twitter, which normally the biggest bug has been when Twitter auto logs me out, but you can see that everything's working normally. If you guys wanna give me a follow, shout out Knoopsy on that one. Love that picture. But let's finish up this video and go to the normal view. So as you guys saw, there weren't too many tangible differences inside of this iPadOS 15.5 beta 3 update. And again, most of the time when you have the 15.5 update or the 0.5 update, that means it's all gonna be kind of privacy fixes, bug performance enhancements, and all that good stuff, getting us ready for iPadOS 16 to release, or at least be announced in June WWDC. So to begin with, this update was gonna be a little bit on the slower side, so every beta iteration inside of this update is gonna be nothing too tangible you can really take a hold of, or no feature set that you're gonna to tout to anybody. The one main one, which I wish I could test out if I had a DualSense controller, was that finally, supposedly, Apple's giving developers the ability to use the DualSense controllers on the PS5 in order to get that rumble feature that we're missing with MFI controller support, with Xbox controllers, and even the PS4 and PS5 controllers. So that's gonna be an interesting one to see how that plays out and see if applications kind of re-update themselves to enable that feature because I think that's a big deal, especially for shooting games like Call of Duty, you know, things like Madden and 2K. That would be absolutely great to have. But then the other interesting one was the omission of the precise locations inside of your memories. So Apple seems to have removed certain locations from the memory situation inside of the Photos app. But again, to each their own, I guess Apple probably had to do this for a certain reason, we just don't know why. But again, Apple did do that and you guys should be aware of that. But that's pretty much gonna do it for this video. If you guys learned something new, leave a little comment down below and also leave a dolphin if you guys made it to the end. And if you guys wanna see some other iPadOS update videos or maybe some other accessory videos for the iPad or the Mac, click on one of these videos right here. But I'm out of here.